you're a vegetarian, you don't want to be here watching this video, me making delicious meat sauce and you can't have any. But you know, you vegetarians, you'll probably live longer, but you won't get to taste this awesome meat sauce I'm about to make. So anyone looking for an easy, quick dinner you can make in 30 minutes or less, this is one of my go-to meals. Very simple, very limited ingredients. All it takes is some onion and garlic and ground beef, canned tomatoes, tomato paste. That's basically it. Very, very simple. Let me talk about the tomatoes first. Um, I, I always think the best flavor comes from plum tomatoes or San Marzano tomatoes, and I use just plain canned tomatoes. I always puree them in a food processor. You can also do it in a, in a blender, but you have to puree it to get a really beautiful smooth meat sauce. So uh, I'm going to do this one can, and you know I'm only opening it because I got a brand new red can opener, right? Love my new can opener. Okay, so here it is. That's what it looks like inside. See? It's going to go in the food processor. Beautiful. Oh, plum tomatoes are the best. Absolute best. Okay. Now we're going to puree this. It just takes, I don't know, 30 seconds maybe till it's smooth. Okay, it looks pretty smooth. Yep. Nice and smooth. We take it off the processor. Have it on standby. I'll move this out of the way so you can see. And now we're going to start cooking the sauce. It's really, really quick. I've got the pan. While I was pureeing, I just started my pan to heat it up. And you put in about two teaspoons of olive oil. And here's the thing. Don't skimp on the oil because tomatoes, especially cooked tomatoes, are very high in lycopene, which is a cancer protector. But you get a lot more of it if there's some fat in there. So anytime you cook tomatoes, try to have a little bit of fat. Of course, olive oil is the heart healthiest fat around. So about medium high temperature, you're going to heat up the oil. I think it's pretty much heated. It's pretty loose already. Now we're going to put in about a half cup. Again, uh, you can, uh, you know, they don't have to be exact, but about a half cup of chopped onion and a clove of garlic. I'm using a pretty good sized clove. You can use two cloves of garlic if you like garlic, doesn't matter. So I'm going to put it in my garlic press and put it right in with the onion here, and then they can go in there together. Okay. Oh, oh, it smells good already. All right. So this is going to go into the, the pot, into the olive oil. Ah, oh, there's that sound. Okay. Stir it around a bit. And this is going to cook in there um, for about two to three minutes. Okay, so it's been about two to three minutes, maybe two and a half minutes. And this is what you want. Look at this. The beautiful golden brown. Oh, the smell. Everything tastes better with onions and garlic. That's about what you want. Nice and just started to get a little bit brown. And now we're going to add the pound of ground beef. I use the leanest ground beef I can, so obviously it's better uh, for it to be lower in fat. So we we'll just plop this in there on top of the onions and garlic. There goes one and two. And then you just kind of break it up. And this whole, uh, you just uh, keep cooking and kind of stirring once in a while until the, all the pink and red is gone. And that takes maybe three to four minutes. So I usually break it up like this. And then I just let it sit for a minute or so before I turn it. And I'll show you what it looks like. It starts to brown on the bottom and you mix it all in and so it's been about a minute, and you can see I'm going to turn it, start turning it over. See how it's browned on the bottom? Just give it a little time to start browning, and then you just kind of flip it over and get the red part on the bottom. And after another minute or so, you just keep stirring and stirring, and it'll be all ready for the, for the tomatoes. All right, three to four minutes is all it takes, and if you can see, it's pretty much, I've been stirring it. You kind of stir it, press it down a little bit, stir it around. Pink's mostly gone, nice and browned. Now, we're gonna add the tomato, the, uh, the pureed tomato, and I'll try and do it to show you how it comes out. Look at this. Ah. Oh, this smooth, lovely tomato. And then two tablespoons of tomato paste. Whoever invented tomato paste in a tube, thank you so much. Okay, so two tablespoons. Well, and this is cooking, you leave it uncovered like that. So two tablespoons, there's one, and two, okay, half teaspoon of salt, a little bit of fresh ground pepper. So you stir everything in, you reduce the heat to medium, and you cook it uncovered for about 20 minutes, 
And one more thing that I do sometimes is I add two tablespoons of parsley if I have it. If I don't have it, I don't use it. So I'm going to put two tablespoons of parsley in and then stir that in. And you know, sometimes a piece of tomato doesn't get blended, so I just kind of fish it out like that. All right, so you give it one last stir, and you're going to cook it uncovered like this for 20 minutes. The tomato paste will help it thicken up and give it an even uh, better, stronger tomato flavor. And so while that cooks for 20 minutes, you've got time to make a salad and cook your pasta. And I decided to cook spaghetti. That's what I'm going to be making. So I'm going to get the water going for spaghetti. And uh, it takes about 10 minutes or so. And, you know, people, they used to say if you throw spaghetti at the wall, it sticks, it's done. Uh, they mean one strand, not the whole pot. I'm just saying, I know somebody, handful of spaghetti on the wall, wasn't pretty. Spaghetti time. So it's been about 10 minutes. My spaghetti's cooking, my sauce is cooking. You give it a little stir every couple of, you know, maybe every five minutes or so. I think I stirred it once since we stopped. Look at this, how beautiful is that? And it's, you know, if you want it like more juicy, you cook it a little less time. If you want it thicker, you cook it longer. For me, 20 minutes is just about right. And also, you can add spices if you want. If you want to throw in a bay leaf or some Italian spices, I never do. I really like it just like this. Onions and garlic, salt and pepper is perfect for me. And uh, cook it until it's the right uh, thickness that you want. But uh, you'll see how it is. It's really beautiful after, after about 20 minutes. So it's almost ready. So it's been about 16, 17 minutes. It looks like my sauce is already done. I had it cooking up on medium pretty uh, vigorously. But see, it looks like it's just about right. So nice and thick, but still lots of juice. So I'm going to turn that off. And I'll drain my spaghetti, and then uh, we'll put it all together. OK, here's my spaghetti into a bowl. All right. Now here's how I like to do it. I'm going to bring the sauce over. I like to put some, uh, some of the sauce uh, in first and stir it into the whole bowl. And, it's, and spaghetti is really easy to do with tongs. So I'm just going to mix that in to coat all the spaghetti. Obviously, you want to do that first. Coat it all. And then there's a little, a little bit of meat in there, which is good. And now I like to ladle some of the nice thick meat sauce on top like that. Look. There. Oh my god, this smells so good. There it is. Spaghetti with meat sauce. It was actually less than 30 minutes by the time it was all done. So I hope you'll try it. It's really, really good. So simple. You don't even have to use beef. You know, depending where people live, they make it with, you know, bison, reindeer, antelope, um, moose, goat, you know, but you have to find the meat. I mean, if I went to my butcher and I said, you know, can I get a pound of goat? He would say, I don't have any, but I can get your goat. Get your goat. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make flat bread faster than it would take you to drive to the store and buy it, which you will never do again after you have homemade flat bread. It's that good. You know, at my house with Thanksgiving, everyone expresses their gratitude before dinner. It's usually something like, we're grateful for our health, our family and friends, and Jenny's pumpkin pie, because it is awesome.